What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to go over all of the new guns that have been added to COD World War II. I wanted to share some of the basic stats with you, what they feel like, what they compare to as far as guns that are already in the game, and just generally try to give you an indication of what they're like so that you guys can make the decision for yourself as to whether or not you want to spend some armory credits on one of these particular guns. Now keep in mind, this isn't a replacement for my Gun Guide series. We will be having the Gun Guide episodes coming out, actually starting this weekend. The first episode is already well underway. I've almost got it done, actually. So that'll be coming to you guys this weekend. And in that series, I go into much greater detail with this, and I share some best class setups and things like that. But today's video is meant to just give you an overview of what these guns are like, and whether or not they'd be worth it for you. So first up, let's kick it off with the new sniper rifles. The PTRS is an extremely powerful sniper rifle. This is a semi-automatic sniper rifle that kind of brings back memories of the Barrett 50 cal from Modern Warfare 2. So it's semi-automatic, you can fire it relatively quickly, but it does have a decent amount of recoil between shots. And it is the highest damage sniper rifle in the game when you look at the multipliers. This will be a one-shot kill literally anywhere in the body, even the toe. Now the M1903 Springfield is pretty similar in the sense that it's a one-shot kill everywhere except for the foot. But this PTRS, literally anywhere, as long as you're not shooting through cover, it will be a one-shot kill. To compensate for that extra power, though, it does have a slower aim down sight time. It's the slowest in the game for the sniper rifles at 450 milliseconds, which is a couple frames slower than the Car 98 k and the M1903 Springfield. So this is a really great sniper rifle if you're the kind of sniper that just likes to hang back and play that traditional sniper role. You want to lock down a lane and have a decent fire rate. You want something that's somewhat forgiving, but also really powerful. The PTRS is an excellent sniper rifle for that. Just keep in mind, this is not a quick scoping sniper rifle. You might be able to pull it off against some not so great players, but that aim down sight time is far too slow to be able to quick scope really consistently and effectively with this sniper rifle. So that's the first one. The second sniper rifle that they added, this is the lever action sniper rifle. It's kind of the opposite of the PTRS within the sniper category. This one is all about aiming down sight quickly, but you do have to be much more accurate with this. It's essentially a Lee Enfield with a faster fire rate. The one shot kill areas are identical to the Lee Enfield. So that's the upper chest, neck, head, as well as the arms. Anywhere in those areas, it'll be a one shot kill. Anywhere else though, you'll get a hit marker. It's aim down sight time is also identical to the Lee Enfield at 370 milliseconds. So it's definitely designed for quick scoping. It's rate of fire is the fastest within what I would consider the quick scoping sniper rifles. It's faster than all of the sniper rifles. Aside from the new PTRS, it has a higher fire rate, as well as the Carabin, which is obviously meant to be a semi-auto sniper rifle. But as far as the sniper rifles you would tend to use for quick scoping, the lever action has the fastest fire rate at 60 rounds per minute. And its magazine capacity is somewhat respectable, although not quite as good as the Leon Field at 6 rounds. With this one, I think the thing I like about it the most is simply the looks of it, as well as the animations when you're rechambering. I just think it looks really cool. Honestly, if you never did get this one, the Lee Enfield is a perfectly suitable replacement for it. Same thing with a Type 38. They're both very similar to this sniper rifle, so if you don't end up getting it, you're honestly not really missing out on too much. Moving on to the blunderbuss, this is in the shotgun category, and with this one, it's a really fun and kind of gimmicky shotgun. It's not a super powerful shotgun by any means, at least not in my opinion, simply because it takes so freaking long to reload, and it's a single shot shotgun. You essentially have to run hustle with this. If you're not running hustle, it's just not gonna work out too well for you because your reload time is ridiculously long. Based on my initial testing, the one-shot kill potential is a little bit better than the combat shotgun, not by like a very, very noticeable amount, but it's a bit better than the combat shotgun. And up close, it is more forgiving than the combat shotgun. Instead of having to hit three pellets at point blank range, you only have to hit two pellets at point blank range with the blunderbuss. I should also point out that aiming down sight with this shotgun doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. You're better off just running steady aim and then hip firing with it. And overall, I would say if you're really into shotguns or you're just a completionist, then absolutely get your hands on the blunderbuss. It is a lot of fun to use and it's a bit of a challenge to use as well. But for anybody that really just takes shotguns seriously and they want to do extremely well with shotguns all the time, I think in most situations you're just better off with a combat shotgun. This brings us to the LMG category. The new LMG in the game is the Stinger. Now the Stinger is clearly based off of the Bren when we're talking about the hard-coded stats for this game. It's got a very slow rate of fire, but an excellent two-shot kill potential. It's essentially always going to be a two-shot kill in core game modes, unless you're shooting through some form of cover. And with this, it does have a slightly faster fire rate than the Bren at 312 rounds per minute. Keeping in mind the Bren is 300 rounds per minute, so very slightly higher rate of fire than the Bren. And one other big leg up that this does have over the Bren is the fact that it has a standard 80 round magazine rather than a 30 round magazine. 
Since the fire rate is so low with that 80 round magazine, you basically never have to reload this gun. You can survive for a very long time without ever needing to reload. This is a huge leg up over the Bren because now there's really no need to run extended mags, whereas with the Bren, I really felt like it was necessary due to the long reload time to use extended mags. You don't really need it for this gun. Also, I would say the iron sights on this gun are better for me at least compared to the Bren. You don't have that giant magazine sticking up on taking up the whole right side of your screen. It's more so just towards the center of the screen. That's not to say that the iron sights are great in my opinion, I just think they're definitely better than the Bren. Now so far it might sound great and like the perfect replacement for the Bren and you never have to use the Bren again, but the one big downside to the Stinger is the fact that its aim down sight time is painfully slow. It's 550 milliseconds, which is by far slower than the Bren, and the Bren was already the slowest aiming down sight LMG in the game at 380 milliseconds. Even with quick draw, the aim down sight time is still pretty darn slow with the Stinger, so definitely a huge downside of that gun. If you're planning on just posting up and staying at a position, this gun absolutely dominates the Bren. If, however, you're trying to move around the map a little bit and you might run into somebody when you're not ready and already aiming down sight, you're probably going to find yourself in a decent amount of trouble. So for this one, I would say it really depends on your play style. If you're the type of guy that likes to just hang back with an LMG and just lock down a lane and you're totally fine just sitting there aiming down sight, I would say this is definitely superior to the Bren. If, however, you do like to move around a bit more often with your LMGs, I think the Bren is probably a better bet. So finally, we're getting into the SMG category, we have the Type 2 Nambu. Now the Nambu is a 4 to 6 shot kill, which is pretty standard for SMGs. It's got pretty much average ranges for SMGs, nothing exceptional by any means. It's extremely accurate, this is one of the big upsides to the Nambu, is it has pretty much just straight vertical recoil, so it's extremely easy to control this and you can challenge people at a pretty decent distance for an SMG. Its overall time to kill compared to the other SMGs in the game is kind of meh. It's not that great, it's not nearly the fastest killing SMG in the game, but if you put rapid fire on there, it makes it a lot more competitive with guns like the PPSH. So as much as I do like this SMG and I'm enjoying it quite a bit, the one big downside is its hip fire spread. The Nambu has the worst hip fire spread in the SMG category and it's more in line with the rifles in this game. It's nothing too major, it still has a really fast sprint out name down sight time, so those aren't going to be a problem for you, it's just that hip fire isn't going to be great. Personally, I would say the closest weapon that this compares to at this point is the MP40, although I would say it's a bit easier to control the recoil than the MP40, but it does have a very slightly slower fire rate. So, those are all the new weapons that were just recently added. I'm not going to cover the melee weapons, like the melee weapons there's an axe as well as a claymore. For those ones, really it's just what you think looks cooler, honestly. Like, I I'm not even going to bother going for the melee weapons, I don't really care about them all that much. But as far as the ranged weapons go, my personal list, keeping in mind this is my list based on my preferences and my playstyle, I'm not really into sniper rifles all that much for instance, and I love SMGs. I would say the Nambu should be the number one priority. First off, this is within the Undead collection, so it's a limited time item, and after this event ends, the only way to get the Nambu will be either through supply drops, or if they happen to have a contract for it, which I'm sure they will at some point, but you might be waiting for some time. After that, for me, I'm gonna go with the Lever Action Sniper Rifle. I like the Lever Action Sniper Rifle a decent amount, because it's pretty snappy, it looks really cool, it's got a decent rate of fire, and overall it's just a decently balanced sniper rifle as long as you're accurate with it. In third place for me, I'm gonna go with the Stinger LMG. I really enjoy using this, although that aim down sight time I have a hard time getting past because I do like to be a bit aggressive even when I'm using an LMG, and I really feel like that holds me back quite a bit. Having said that, I've been enjoying it more than the Bren lately, so as long as you're adjusting your playstyle, you can have a lot of fun with the Stinger. After that one, I'm going to go with the blunderbuss. I feel like it's just such a fun weapon to use for a challenge and a change of pace. I don't take it seriously at all when I'm using the blunderbuss, but I love the reload animation and I feel like the kills are just more satisfying than a combat shotgun kill because it's a high risk, high reward type of weapon. This leaves us with the PTRS. I don't really have too much interest in the PTRS when I'm sniping. I'm not really like a huge quick scoper by any means, but I like having that option available to me so I can be at least somewhat aggressive with the sniper rifles. The PTRS personally just doesn't really appeal to me, and I think I'd much rather just use a Car 98 or an M1903 if I'm looking for a more powerful sniper rifle that isn't going to be getting me hit markers too often. The one thing I will say about the PTRS though is if you're a completionist and you want to get every single item in the game, 
This is also one of those limited time items, so you do have to get it before this event ends, or just like with the Nambu, you have to wait till a contract comes up for it, or get lucky and get it out of a supply drop. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video. I'd love to know in the comment section below, so far, out of these five guns that have been added, which one is your favorite, and which one do you feel is just not really necessary for you, and you don't really care about too much. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.